This is a dream come true for me, to be at the factory where sewing machines are actually made. Much of our every day is spent at our favorite tool, the sewing machine. Why, where would we be without it today? Now the Swiss are known for fine workmanship and precision. When applied to sewing machines, results in a fine piece of machinery. I am so excited and Mr. Keller is waiting for us. Come on inside. Could you imagine a more clever object? Warms the body, ignites the mind. A child sleeps under mother's creation, together forever. The art of the heart and design of the mind puts you to bed one day at a time. The art of the heart and design There are over 500 people employed in this plant, with 15% in the apprentice program. This training ensures well-trained employees who learn from experience. Much of the intricate work requires a personal touch, but some steps can be done by machine. This robot sends the chassis or frames of the sewing machine to several stations where holes are drilled, one after another all programmed according to production needs. Of course, these robots do not take coffee breaks or even need time off for sick days. He's got very gentle hands. I can see yes. how he goes oh, in there, <laughs> very gentle. Feet, feet everywhere, a vital part of sewing machines today. Presser feet is what we mean. We are producing over 600,000 feet a year, 300,000 for the new machines. The other 300,000 feet are for specialty sewing and are easily attached to the machine. As you gain more confidence and have your guide lessons, you will learn the potential of these feet. Then it's fun to build a presser feet library. Many parts need to be drilled and fine-tuned here. Okay, you can see here the assembly of a sewing machine. There are six people assemble a machine from the start to the end. It lasts about an hour. In an hour, one machine is produced. With the machine finally assembled, the testing is done on a small fabric swatch. Everything from straight stitch to buttonholes are examined. These are uh, the samples that actually come in our machine, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. The sewing test. Mm -hmm. yeah. I particularly liked watching the embroidery machine. Then a final sewing test is done before the machine is cleaned and goes to the packing department. From the assembly department, the machines are coming down here to the packing department. Each pack package is then signed with the country 
where the machine has to go. I see. But that, uh, that means putting the, uh, all the accessories in and the presser, all the little the parts. Power the power is important, of course, right. because not each country has the same power. Right. And that knee lever, if it Each goes country in there. has different uh, accessories. I see. Finally, the machines are stacked, ready for shipment to countries all over the world. Mr. Keller showed me another part of the plant. Here we found an integral part of today's sewing machine being created, the computer. Electronics are the brains of today's machines with sensitive finger touch on the screen that connects directly to the computer. I would say the mechanical part today of the machine is not changing very much no. from model to model, but yes. it's of course the electronic part, the prints, uh, which are changing or be developed to, to offer more possibilities right. to the consumer. We can't thank you enough for this opportunity to get behind the scenes and see how it is all done. Yes. Thank you. After the tour, I had a chance to go to the museum, inspect all those antique machines, and meet the president. The history of the Bernina sewing machine is told right here in this room. And who better to tell us than Mr. Hans-Peter Ulchi, grandson of Fritz and Hermine Gigoff and president of the company. Tell us a little bit about the beginning of these machines. Well, if you look around, uh, you see something else than just sewing machines. Actually, my great-grandfather, he started with Hemstitch sewing machines in 1893. And then in 1932, we actually started, or my grandfather started, with, the, with sewing machines, mm -hmm. with the Bernina name was created. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people ask me, why Bernina? And uh, it's a very nice name, and it sounds a little Italian for some people, especially Americans. So he was on vacation near Sam Ritz, and he saw this beautiful Bernina mountain, and he said, that's it, that's my name. Uh -huh. That's how he got started with the Bernina name. And so you see everything is coming from mechanical black machines to this beautiful Artista 180, which is a uh, embroidery machine. So maybe introduced in the last 70 years, 1932 to 2000, maybe 20 different models. Over the last few years, there has been quite a change, quite a revision from the mechanical to the computer. Has, has your factory here adapted to that and the sewing world also? We weren't the first introducing electronic machines. Benina sometimes likes to be second, but a better second than a first mediocre one. So we introduced the first electronic machines uh, in 1985 with 1130, you remember? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we believe we made a lot of uh, progress in the last 15 years, using electronics not just to be a high-tech company, but to use electronics to help consumers to have a simpler way of sewing. And especially, we have found adapting it to our very special work, which is the quilt yes. craft field. The quilt world it's kind of syn synonymous with Benina because we heard in the States that uh, Benina is really the quilting machine and we are very proud of that. Do you have any secrets in getting younger people into our sewing field? Have, have we found a way for that yet? I think the whole technological change or progress is helping uh, to cure that a little bit old-fashioned image. Mm -hmm. I believe now with the uh, computer hookup that young people love computers and love the internet. So I think Benina uh, realized that and uh, the whole industry realized that. And now uh, the high-tech machines unfortunately still are a little bit expensive. That's why maybe not enough young people uh, are joining us. But I think the trend is a good one where they can play with the computer and use the sewing machine as a printer. And now with embroidery online, even to, you know, today you can uh, buy 
all these fancy uh, stitches or ideas via the internet. So mm -hmm. I think he's helping to, to, to get more young people uh, to this, into this business. And especially the embroidery module where they can personalize things, do their alphabet, do their own name. I, I think that has a lot to do with it. And, and just realizing they can just do it by pushing a few buttons and changing a, a, a color of thread. Plus, I think what has helped the image uh, of sewing to be improved or to improving is, as you said, in Europe and in the States, up to 20 years ago, a sewing machine was purchased because you wanted to do sew garments, or mm -hmm. in Europe still, especially in Switzerland, where we have a lot of frugal people, they do... Uh, do they what, still what darn they socks? Da darning. darning. Socks, socks, mm -hmm. plus jeans and other things. So. We don't throw things away as easily as in the States. <laughs> so I think the, what has uh, transferred the image also is that the quilting is something new, the embroidery is something new, the whole home deck. I think we enlarged the usage of the sewing machine and so I, I think we're touching more, dif more different people and hopefully also young ones. Yes. Thank you so much for this opportunity to talk thank to you. Thank you very much, and I would like to say uh, thank you for people like Georgia Bonesteel, oh. who is really helping the sewing industry quite a lot. We call them you as a, one of the gurus <laughs> in quilting. There are others. And we try to duplicate those or find gurus in Europe. Now you can really appreciate what goes into making your sewing machine. Welcome back to the Quilt Built Studio. Today our alphabet is K and L. K, of course, is for knots. That's what you do not want to see on the surface or even the back of your quilt. So remember to hide those knots. L is for lap quilting. To quilt smaller amounts of layered material at one time with or without frames in order to make an entire quilt. Sometimes it's in sections, sometimes it's one entire quilt top, but you're just working on one area at a time and not on that big hoop. All right, now I'd like to explain to you various ways of doing lap quilting. And we'll start with the most traditional and what I'm usually associated with, and that's one block at a time. If you'll look at the carnival quilt, a very gay, bright quilt made with solid colors, and notice that the borders in certain sections are included you can probably count the 12 divisions that went into that. After all, it was nothing more than 12 inch blocks, four of them that were sewn together into doing a 24 inch square. The perimeter sides have the border included. When it comes to putting those together, after each block is all quilted, I want to give you some tips on exactly how that is done. The key to lap quilting is first of all to make certain that you have not quilted up to one half inch of the connecting sides. The second key is to trim the three layers that would be your front, your batting, and your backing so they're all even. Then the next step is to take one side, this would be the side that's going against the feed dogs, and pin your backing to the back side. Pin that back. Then put that down and the other front side that's going to connect to that, pin your batting and this backing all the way back and that reveals where you're going to stitch. Then find your corners and line those up and then I usually do the midpoint and the other end and if there's any place else that has to match, this is the time to do it so there's any easing that goes in between. You'll go to the sewing machine just like this so that you are actually catching some of that batting inside this, these connections of where the two fronts are going together. Now you could reverse that. You could be stitching the backs together and doing your handwork on the front side. In this case, we're doing it this way. I'm sewing the fronts together. Your next step then is to release these pins after it's stitched and then because of the weight of that seam it's going to fall this way it's going to fall towards me then I would use my lip scissors and trim off about a quarter of an inch of the batting you don't want any lumps at that connection and when that has been trimmed off 
then this side can go straight and this side can come and turn under a quarter of an inch and that is where your handwork takes place. And the reason you want to make sure and work on a flat surface is that you don't want any of that pushy thing to happen on the front side. It's nice when that connection has all been made to then build your quilt into rows. You can see that this is one long row of three sections, three blocks that have been sewn together. And here is your flat lap seam. You can see the quarter inch has been turned under. In some cases, you might want to do a little bit of quilting on the front side in the ditch, but make sure this back side is free and then it will come and turn under after you finish that handwork. The next kind of lap quilting that I think has become more popular today is what is known as row lap quilting. And in this instance, I'm putting a very bright quilt together and I have actually pieced my blocks. I've cut one big backing. Do you see my bright backing? One continuous piece of material. And then these are going to connect after I have quilted each row. So when I quilt my rows, I start in the center and go out. And here as well, I'll, I will have some of those dangling threads that I will leave dangle until I connect this together the same manner that I did this, then re-thread my, put my needle in here again and finish that seam. So this is what I would call row lap quilting. Another form of lap quilting that has appealed to me is what I call sew and extend. And that has to do with starting with very much like a medallion quilt. in the same manner and you can see that here's a large panel the outside panel that was stitched on when that was done then this was a large panel that was sewn and, and extended so you're always quilting on the outside edge and that that makes it very nice you know that I sometimes say the back is just as important as the front of your quilt so if you're lap quilting why not take some of the decorative fabric, cut it into strips, and use that to cover those exposed seams on the back side. You end up with what we call a two-for-one quilt in that case. Another idea is to collect those antique blocks, and I'd like to show you this one. And this was lap quilted in sections on the sewing machine, and the section went from here to here, and on the back side, I just simply had fun with mimicking that same square within a square on the back side and developed a whole new pattern on the back side. So that's a fun way to do your lap quilting and sort of update some old fashioned patterns. Now I'd like to go to the machine and show you um, a new quilt idea. It's much like the coast to coast uh, quilt, but this one's called button up. The button-up quilt is lap quilted in individual squares that have scallops and it's totally reversible. It ends up with having these fun pinwheels on it and let me tell you how it's made. I start with a 12 inch block and simply put scallops on all four sides that have the seam allowance included. So you have this unusual template. Now for each block you need to cut out two fabrics and one batting. The batting is just the size of the square, in this case 12 inches. And I go ahead and base that batting in place. And then I also would put any decorative design that I'm going to quilt on one side, usually the lightest side because it'll be easier to mark. 
And once that is done, you put the two right sides together, machine stitch around all sides except where you have a straight corner. Go ahead and leave that unstitched so that you can invert that and turn it inside out. Now once that has been inverted, then you're really ready to do your quilting. It's just these individual squares that you can take around with you. I, I put 20 in this quilt and as you can see I have a continuous quilting pattern and I've gone ahead and put my metallic thread on and I've done that very narrow zigzag stitch. Remember that's a wonderful tip for your machine quilting. Straight lines are not very forgiving but the zigzag stitches are forgiving when you do your machine quilting. I'd probably do a little stippling out on the back side or maybe even some cross hatching. Once all 20 blocks are quilted and that opening has been whip stitched in place, then I'm ready to connect the blocks and this is what is so unique. You simply take these edges, especially where it has been marked here, and overlap the edges. Now I'm going to pin them in place and I think this will give you a better idea of how this works. So with this pinned in place, and of course you'd match up the straight line on the other side also, and let's do a little mock sample for the next side. If this is the beginning of one row, this is going to be the beginning of another row. Let's pretend that these have been already quilted and you're overlapping these edges again and I'll pin this in place and once these have been pinned and then stitched then you can come and overlap these so they can be stitched again so this would overlap like this and this would overlap like this so you make almost an interlocking thing that's going on after they've been stitched this comes back this comes back, this comes back, and so forth. And then you get your pinwheel. Now you can applique those in place. Put a little bow here. If it's a baby quilt, I'd put a bow. I did buttons. Anything that's going to hold that in place, and it can even stay free here. You don't have to stitch it down. So that's a wonderful, easy lap quilted quilt. In honor of our trip to the sewing machine factory, I designed a sewing machine in a six inch block. It's called the Patchworker, of course. And in this case, I went ahead and just used the freezer paper as a template and a guide to, to cut out. And it makes it very nice. Sometimes you just keep it on the right side and then trim off your quarter inch seam allowance. And you can either keep that on when you're sewing or pull it off. Now, I would divide this block into three sections probably the base of the machine and this area right here, the background, and then this top part of the machine, and then this is the side. And of course, this little piece across the top that holds the spool of thread is, is very important. In order to get that spool look, as you see right here, I just took a one inch square and cut it on the diagonal, sewed and flipped that on each side. We're getting kind of Futsy here, but that's how you get that effect there. And then you would, of course, trim off those dog ears so you've got that material back to the black size that it was. And then you're ready to pull this off and stitch that. And so you're working with one section here, a section here, and then this section that attaches, and then your base, and then your sides. And I would take the paper off once you get ready to sew. Okay, next time we are going all the way to Germany with our lap quilting taping crew. We look forward to seeing you. Thanks for joining us today. Closed captioning made possible by OmniGrid, manufacturer of the original patented black and yellow rulers and green cutting mats, and Collins, well known for notions and tools for quilt makers. For more information about patterns and designs shown on this series, visit Georgia at www.georgiabonesteel.com. 
Lap quilting with Georgia Bone Steel is made possible in part by grants from Bernina, makers of sewing machines manufactured with the care of traditional Swiss workmanship. Nothing sews like a Bernina. Nothing. By Gamel Quilting Machine Company, offering four sizes of long arm hand guided machines to quilters worldwide. By Coates and Clark, America's number one name in sewing, hand knitting, and craft products. By Martingale and Company, home of That Patchwork Place, publisher of America's best loved craft and hobby books. By Hobbs Bonded Fibers, maker of heirloom premium cotton and wool batting, with a package labeling system to help quilters select the correct batting for specific projects. And by Horn of America, cabinets of the future today.